This is Brent with Lycans Motorsports. Just showing off some rotating assembly bits for a Ford 363 small block uh, that I'll be doing. I do uh, predominantly FE engines, but I do get the occasional small block Ford in Cleveland. Um, gonna be using a set of Male Power Pack series pistons on this one. These are four 125 bore. Molly stuff is really nice, really light, 300 and almost 399 grams. Uses a 927 wrist pin, one millimeter, one millimeter, two millimeter rings. Got an inboard pin boss, kind of a slipper skirt type design, coated, really nice stuff. Gonna be putting those with um, some scat. Uh, connecting rods, these are 5.4 inch rods, use a 927 pin obviously, 2-123 rod journal, 7 16 cap screw, um, pretty beefy stuff but still light. Wrist pins are, um, I think these are almost two and a quarter in length. But heavy wall, they're 165 wall, pretty heavy. And some wire locks to go with them. So I'm going to uh, pause for a second and then we're going to, I've actually got everything weighed up and uh, I'm gonna weight match everything and then do some piston rod assembly. Uh, show you guys how, how to get the pistons on the rods and um, wire locks in there and uh we'll we'll do some assembly all right give me a minute okay we've got everything uh weight matched and you know if you spend if you sit down and spend some time uh you don't have to you know start grinding on on rods or anything like that most of the time you can sit down and pair things up and strategically put those things together so that you don't have to do a lot of grinding i've got everything here um you know well within a gram or so um with matched parts and and i didn't have to grind on anything so um i've already went in and put one circlip uh, on one side i just that's the kind of way that i do it i go through and do all the pistons like that and then i just have a solid stop to slide my wrist wrist pin in so um grab some Grab some oil, and I just use motor oil on these. Um, put a little bit on the wrist pin boss. This is a number one piston. This is a number one rod, and Ford and Chevy rods, they all have um, a chamfer on the big end. Um, it goes depending on the engine, it goes, it can go in different spots. So on a Ford, um, the front, the most forward cylinder is, is number one cylinder on the passenger side. So all the chamfers go to the to your right as, as you're putting uh, the piston on the rod. Um, on a Chevrolet, it, it's backwards. Um, the chamfer would go on the left side since the front cylinder is number one on the driver's side. Uh, just a little bit of trivia, uh, if, you're, if you like Pontiacs, um, the front cylinder is the front one on, is the first one on the passenger side, but number one cylinder on a Pontiac is actually the front one on a driver's side. So um, you've got to watch when you do your firing order um, but the rod, the pistons go on the rods with the chamfer facing to, to the right. So just a little bit of trivia there. Okay. So, um, got some oil on the pin boss. I'm going to put some oil in the wrist pin bushing here. 
all of these wrist pins weighed exactly the same down to the tenth of the gram really nice got some oil on there That went in there really nice, nice clearance. Got my chamfer to the right. Everybody has their own tools for doing wire locks. This is my little wire lock screwdriver. Um, I use it for everything, including spiral locks. So I don't know if you can see. You start the wire lock in the groove and you can use this little cutout right here for a leverage point. And you just wanna put some leverage in there and you can hear it click right in. Doesn't take much at all. Number one's done. I'm gonna do one more for you and then we'll go on to the next part. This is number, number two rod, oil on the bushing. This is a number two piston. Oil on the wrist pin bosses. Oil on the wrist pin. Got my chamfer to the right. Wire lock started in the groove. Gonna hold a little bit of pressure on it and snap her on in there. That's all there is to it. All right, I'm gonna pause the video and then we'll go on. I'm gonna finish the rest of these, then we'll go to the next step. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna put these oil rail supports on the pistons. When you get into some shorter compression height pistons and the compression height is the distance from the center line of the wrist pin to the top of the crown. Um, when you get into some shorter pistons, you will notice that the wrist pin boss gets into the oil rail groove where your oil rails and your uh, oil rail expander live. Um, it's not a big deal. That's not a problem whatsoever. I know that there's a lot of things on the internet that say, hey, that's that's a horrible thing and your engine's gonna smoke and uh, you're gonna have all, all kinds of issues that couldn't be further from the truth. Um, there are so many engines running around with, with, the, uh, with the wrist pin bore into the oil rail groove. Um, Again, not a problem. I know guys, a, a, a 347 um, Ford or something like this, 363 that uses um, a 3400 stroke and a 5400 rod, you're dealing with an inch 090 compression height on the piston. And you know, that's a very, very combination. If you could think of how many 347s are running around in the United States. I know, um, I know an editor of of a Ford magazine that has 100,000 miles on his 347 without issues. So, you know, you'll see a lot of engine combinations with, uh, with an oil rail support and nothing wrong with that. Um, so they come in a pack and this is what they look like. They're just, their, their, their job is to bridge this gap right here so that your oil rings, your oil rails will have something to sit on. And um, the biggest thing is that they have this little dimple. And the dimple keeps, keeps them from spinning. So you want the dimple to be down and you wanna put it in the wrist pin boss like that. If you can see, here's my dimple. There's the wrist pin boss. And I'm gonna just walk this around that's all there is to it and um, you want to see that dimple sticking out in this in this area here in this cutout and what what happens is when this ring wants to walk it'll stop 
when it reaches um, this edge here, keep it from spinning. Most people don't know that piston rings spin. Um, and it's typically at an average of about 12 revolutions per minute. So, you know, if you ever put an engine together and, you know, oriented your piston rings and then, you know, later on tore that engine down, you notice that the rings are, you know, all in different, in different spots. It's because they rotate. So that little dimple, its job is to keep that oil rail support from spinning. So I want to get the rest of these oil rail supports on and um, I'll uh, make some more videos as we progress with this engine build. This is a 363 uh, using a Ford Racing Boss 302 block, uh, a steel scat crankshaft, these scat I-beam rods, Molle pistons. It's going to have AFR heads. Um, it's going to have one of my custom hydraulic roller cams and it's going into a 69 Bronco. So uh, be an interesting build. All right, once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and uh, hope you all have a good day and a good weekend. Thanks.